We're talking with Charlie Mitchell, our own congressional expert. He's the editor-in-chief of Take Action News. Charlie, speaking of politicians, a key congressional figure in the immigration reform debate in the House of Representatives, the chairman of the Judiciary Committee, Bob Goodlatte, made a statement that in some ways may make bipartisan immigration reform more difficult in Congress. What exactly happened there, and what do you make of that? Right. Goodlatte is from Virginia, Republican from Virginia, chairs the Judiciary Committee. Um, you had this very positive development on the business labor side, and then if you're in favor of reform, and then a very negative development with Goodlatte saying that he does not believe that any immigration reform package that includes a path to citizenship for the 11 million citizens, I'm sorry, the 11 million undocumented people who are here now, quote-unquote illegal immigrants, he says if you provide a pathway for citizenship for them, it's dead in the House, and then a lot of House Republicans won't go along with it. That is, um, frankly, Daniel, that, that's a very 2007 position. The, the debate has moved on dramatically from there, and, you know, President Obama has said that's, that's kind of a minimal point of entry in this debate, that the 11 million people who are here and who are working, and they're working under threat of deportation, but they're, you know, they're probably most of them are paying taxes and all of that. They have to be brought into the system, and they have to have a chance to become legal citizens here. So Goodlad drew a line in the sand, but I'll tell you what, if, if this compromise between business and labor puts the finishing touches on a Senate bill, and the Senate moves ahead and passes an immigration bill, and the president is out there really rallying for it, I don't think the House Republicans are going to want to be the entity that stops immigration reform. I think that they look at the demographics out there. They see that they lost the Latino vote overwhelmingly to President Obama and, and to Democrats and congressional races. They need to change that dynamic and this is a situation where they can, you know, they can say that all they want, that there can't be a path to citizenship. But in the end, I predict they're going to cave on that. And I predict that, you know, if there's going to be immigration reform, there will be a way for people who are here now to become citizens. Well, you heard it first here, folks, on Take Action News from Charlie Mitchell, our editor-in-chief. He's handicapping it in favor of the Democrats, in favor of those who, fit, who support a path to citizenship. Charlie's saying that the Republicans will cave. Again, they will cave on a path to citizenship because the political pressure will be too much to bear. But I got to ask, Charlie, there are some Republicans who are saying that this is not an automatic political winner. Whether it's the right thing to do or not may be a different story. Now, you mentioned, obviously, that many of these undocumented immigrants are already taxpayers. If they're not income taxpayers, they're probably Social Security taxpayers because they have to get a Social Security number to work in many of these workplaces. In fact, we know that as of at least 2009, undocumented immigrants were paying $12 billion a year into Social Security while they were ineligible to receive its benefits. So that illustrates a little bit of the absurdity of the debate. But Charlie, what do you make of the argument that this is just going to create 11 million new Democratic voters, folks who are generally low income, less educated, and frankly, regardless of their education or income level, less averse to government intervention. Well, I think that, that, that if the Republicans persist in opposing a pathway to citizenship, they'll make that a, a, you know, a self-realizing prophecy. So um, their opposition will certainly push a generation of people into the, the Democratic column. But look at, you know, you mentioned, you mentioned a great point about the amount of taxes that folks who are undocumented are paying right now. We have, we have analysis by economists from all points of the spectrum who say that maybe the single largest jolt that you could give to the U.S. economy right now would be to, to legalize these 11 million people who are here. That if they were in out of the shadows, that you have, you have serious points that would be added to the GDP right there just by doing that. So there are a lot of arguments coming at the Republicans. There are, there are plenty of Republicans in the House who sit in very safe Republican districts and will oppose this regardless. But, you know, somebody like Speaker John Boehner knows that there aren't enough of them to maintain him in the majority, and to maintain the Republican majority. And so 
eventually they have to appeal to some of the more evenly divided districts and many, many of these districts are seeing the largest demographic population growth. You guessed it. it it's from Hispanic voters. So um, it, it's an issue that they're, they're, that Republicans need to get on the right side of and need to get behind them. And if they are, you know, taking a line in the sand position and are, are blocking normalization, legalization, all of this, or they're perceived that way, it's not good politics. It's probably not going to be a It's such a good point, Charlie, and we always love your expert reporting and analysis, the one and only Charlie Mitchell. Thanks for joining us again, and Charlie, on Take Action News. Great. Thank you, Daniel. Coming up next, we're going to be talking about a rumor scandal about Senator Chuck Hagel, President Obama's defense secretary nominee. We'll be talking to the reporter who is inadvertently responsible for creating a rumor that Chuck Hagel received money from a group called Friends of Hamas. Stay tuned after this.